One was to have a very simple setup for end users. When they were at home, uh, they were employees, maybe from uh, in a low company, they didn't know about Linux, they didn't know about uh, VPN, they just wanted to connect. So we wanted a really simple setup. In addition, we, we wanted a standards based solution. We didn't want to embed our own cryptography, and we didn't want to use someone else's uh, custom protocol. We just wanted to use something that is standard today. Uh, approved by EF or other uh, standard code. Some of the requirement was that we wanted the administrator to be able to see on the router who was connected on every moment. Uh, and not only that, we also wanted the administrator to be able to disconnect or ban users. For example, when he detects an abnormal connection from someone unexpected. And to make the long story short, in the end, we used an open VPN based solution with a lot, really many custom scripts to achieve uh, what we wanted to achieve. Uh, I, I was not very happy with the end solution. So, and I, I will try to explain you why. Because we set these requirements and we want simply set up for users, for example. And however, with open VPN, we needed really a complex configuration file to be downloaded by the user. And the user had also to select between TCP and UDP in, in, a, in, a, in a way that was not really understandable. I mean, as a user, I want to connect to VPN. I don't care if it uses TCP or UDP. I just want it to work. It's not automatically detect what is best for my setup. So our, our next requirement was to rely on a standards-based solution, it, it was not also covered by OpenVPN because although OpenVPN <coughs> works uh, TLS for the key exchange, everything else after the key exchange was a custom new protocol. I mean, maybe it's secure, but uh, I don't know. And uh, <coughs> the other thing is that the administrator had uh, no overview who is connected on the system. Uh, Users connecting, and in order to get a proper view of who is connected on every moment, we have to use a lot of custom state scripts to keep track of who is connecting, who is disconnecting, and uh, removing from the list. I thought this was uh, a quite bad requirement of the software, although we could work around it. And uh, the last one, uh, it was simply not possible to disconnect users from the that were already connected. A few years later, I talked to some other administrator who told me that they managed to achieve it by inserting firewall rules that will uh, block a user who they want to block. But I thought that this was really a hack rather than a solution. You just put a firewall rule there and you block a user who is already connected, but you can't disconnect him. It, it, it didn't align to my days. Anyway, uh, 
suspicious in the past. I quit this job. I had another job in the university. And I received this, this email. You don't have to read it. It was from David Woodhouse. And uh, he was asking me to add an enhancement to Blue TLS that I was working on. And that enhancement was to add datagram TLS support for a pre-draft version of the standard. I was wondering why it was that. And, and that was because uh, David was working on Open Connect uh, uh, client, which is a Cisco AnyConnect uh, compatible client that is based on TLS and other than TLS. I, I checked further on AnyConnect on Cisco's protocol, and uh, it was a proprietary VPN implementation, but it was based on standard protocols. So, and how it was uh, on a high level, it was a VPN channel, it was established over an HTTP session. We started an HTTP session, you did authentication, and then you issued a connect, and you were connected to the VPN, and Optionally, uh, after you connect to the VPN using TCP and HTTPS, you could initiate a UDP channel. And the UDP channel was secured uh, using the Telegram TLS, a pre-draft version. So, we also had, uh, as I mentioned, David was working on open source compatible design, had open connect. And uh, because Cisco AnyConnect uh, protocol is a property, uh, Everything I will uh, talk during this talk will be about the Open Connect protocol, which is the protocol that the open source client talks. That is it's compatible, but uh, it's uh, the protocol we know. Okay, that was the moment I realized that we had a standard compliant VPN, and I started to remember my old project. I tried to use op Open Connect, the client. And uh, let's say the command line client looks like that. You write open connect, the server you want to connect, you get asked your username, you enter your username, you get asked your password, you get your password, and you're connected. That was all. So that was also the moment I realized we had a very simple uh, user setup uh, client. Okay, it was command line, but today we have uh, network manager plugins, we have the Windows clients, based on open connect, we have an Android client. And it's pretty much all, all the same. So from the initial requirements, we had already fulfilled the two. Uh, and, but there was no server side. So I, I, I decided to write this server side. And I, I said, OK, since I'm going to write the server side, Let's uh, make it better than uh, any existing solution. So I want to isolate the user between themselves. So if there is a bug on the uh, server, and no user will be able to see the packets of another user. Or if there is uh, also to operate on the least possible privilege, so that uh, if there is a bug on the uh, handling code for the client, you will not uh, be able to, let's say, escalate and get control uh, of the main system. So I'm, talking, uh, I'm going to talk about the server more now. Uh, the project started in 2013. And today we interoperate with both OpenConnect and AnyConnect clients. And it's developed primarily on Linux and uh, exported later to BSD systems by other things. And uh, OK, since I'm, I'm uh, the main author for the uh, server, I would like to sell it to you more. So I will just describe some features we have for the server. Uh, it supports uh, uh, password authentication using file, uh, BAM, or radios. Uh, you can uh, authenticate using certificates or Kerberos. Kerberos authentication is interesting because you can uh, achieve single sign-on if you use uh, Kerberos uh, as a corporate uh, authentication system. You can achieve single sing sign-on in the sense of connect the VPN, and then you already have a ticket to connect to the other service. Uh, you can set the resource limits per client or per groups of clients uh, using C groups uh, or limit the bandwidth. Uh, with C groups, you can limit also the CPU time, but uh, some groups of users can take. Uh, something that is often uh, not, not considered, but it's quite important today, uh, that processing scales with the number of CPUs. The more CPUs you have in your system, uh, the more clients you can serve. And that's particularly interesting when we have systems today with ARM, uh, ARM servers that have 128 CPUs or something like this. 
<coughs> and of course you support compression using LZS, it's a very old hardware. It's supported by AnyConnect. And uh, LZ4, it's a pretty modern hardware. Of course TLS 1.2, data TLS 1.2. And online user management. So, uh, in, in addition, I, I mentioned before that I wanted to make it uh, quite safe for the users and for, for the, to isolate the rest of the system. And the way I isolate the server process from the main system was using second. So there is a filter uh, limiting the number of syscalls that the work process can uh, operate, uh, isolating uh, users from the main system. And uh, also, uh, all authentication is held on a separate security module, uh, which is a separate process. And uh, the user side is to communicate with the uh, process that authenticate the user. So, this also covers the user authentic uh, isolation and uh, list privilege uh, requirements that I, I set for the server. And now I'm going to uh, describe you the control tool uh, that uh, it's used to administer the server. Uh, it's called OC Control. You run it and uh, you end up in a page like this. If you type help, you get some commands. It's uh, pretty much disconnect user, reload the server, show the status of the, the server, so uh, all the users were connected, so a particular user, and so on. And uh, that's from an old version of the server. Now there are a few more commands, but these are the important ones. And uh, for example, Let's say this is the show users command. Uh, you connect to the, uh, the service administrator and you see who is connected. Uh, the username, the group they belong to, the IP they connected from, the real IP, the VPN IP, the device, how long they are connected, and more information. And you can get, okay, and this, this completes the requirement for user overview that I had originally set. And another command is the show user. In this particular example, we show the user VPN test one. We show an ID that is unique for this uh, session. Uh, username, where, uh, what is the state, uh, what is the user agent uh, he, used, he used to connect. It's the open connect uh, client. How much data he has transferred, uh, how much bandwidth, uh, it's the average bandwidth, and more information. Such as the configuration of the DNS servers. And uh, the, the other requirement was to be able to disconnect the user, <coughs> to ban a user. Uh, there is a command to disconnect the user, and you can disconnect not only a username, but also an ID, which is a specific instance of the user. And completing the requirement for user disconnection and load. So, pretty much. The original project that was given to me 10 years ago, it was completed uh, pretty recently. And the requirements were, were uh, completed with this server. And uh, yeah, when, happens, when the story finishes, the question is what happens afterwards. Uh, we have some future plans for the server and, and the Open Connect uh, overall. We would like to extend a simplified open connect protocol and, uh, if possible, uh, make it independent of uh, Cisco because they're not very cooperative. Uh, we would like to, to drop the legacy, pre datagram TLS 1.0 support. Uh, we would like to use only the latest existing standards. We would like to publish and standardize it, the, the protocol itself, not uh, because it's based on the standard protocols, but the protocol itself, the, how you connect it, how you authenticate, is pretty much custom. And uh, we would like to work on improving performance by using an in-kernel TLS and datagram TLS stack. Uh, Facebook has uh, already sent some kernel patches on it, introducing uh, an in-kernel TLS stack. And uh, we're experimenting uh, with utilizing it because it, uh, we noticed that it improves the performance a lot in this particular scenario more than, than the use case of failure detection. So that uh, pretty much completes my talk.
Uh, these are the websites for the client, the first one, and for the server, the second one. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask it now or you can visit our website. Thank you, Nikos. Raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Yeah, the first one. Just a question. I'm, I'm wondering why you implemented an entirely new server rather than adding some functionality you wanted to the to an existing server. Yeah, but that's that's a very bold uh, question. But uh, no, there's no. But uh, the the thing was that the protocol that OpenVPN was implemented was fixed. So if you have to change the protocol, you have to change most of the code base. And uh, also the isolation uh, thing that I want to put on the server was not present there, so adding it would be pretty much enormous group as structured separate components. So it was much easier to rewrite everything rather than start from uh, OpenVPN. More questions? Yes. The example that you showed uh, on the pad IPv4 addresses, <coughs> will it tell on IPv6 as well? Yes. Hi there. How about the performance of it? How many U concurrent users can you have on a typical server? What is the use case you have for this? And the last release version can scale up to to a thousand users. But uh, that's a limitation of uh, the select call that we use. But uh, now we are developing uh, on the new version that is about to be released. We have lifted the limitation. So the only limitation is the number of two devices that Linux can support. And I think that's around 20,000 uh, or 15,000. I've, ne I've never used this many devices. <coughs> so, no. More questions? <coughs> The bandwidth. Uh, it depends on how the algorithm negotiated. Uh, typically, if both the client and the server have, uh, actually, I cannot tell you the number because it depends really on the client and the server. If it's on one phone. It's totally different, obviously. But it's uh, less than I accept. That sounds like an amazing project. Do you recommend to do such a production like in place of Open Connect? There are commercial providers uh, using Open Connect. Uh, you, you can buy Open Connect to say connections. Uh, so commercial companies. Uh, this, they sell VPN service all over the world. So I, I know it's already being used uh, commercially. Uh, and if, you, if your requirement is not to scale over 1,000 users, you can use the, the current version. So besides the formats, you cannot see how the system It's a new server. Uh, I mean, we, we get bugs uh, as more people use it. But, uh, I, I believe it's production ready. Is there any Sorry? Yeah, we yeah. 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 Thank you. Hello. Uh, how hard is it to uh, add another algorithm to uh, <laughs> Another algorithm? In, in what sense? A TLS algorithm? Uh, Yes, another, uh, another algorithm in the It uses TLS, so everything is supported by TLS. In particular, it uses GNU TLS on the back end. So every algorithm that is supported by GNU TLS uh, will be there. So uh, that, that's pretty much all. If, if you have the algorithm in GNU TLS, you are going to put it on the server. <laughs> Yeah, hi. Um, I saw in your documentation that it's possible to um, offload the SSL input to load balancer. Um, so my question is basically, um, how much of the um, resources required are for the SSL encryption and decryption, and how much 
different servers. So if you do the SSL termination on the load balancer, does that dramatically scale uh, OC serve or is the cost on OCSERF, the biggest cost of thing now is the context switching to internal space and user space because it's a quite thing to do with space that the disadvantage with AVSEC. In AVSEC can do everything in general space. Thank you. So even even if you switch to a lot balancer, the copy from the user space will be remained. You can, but it's hard. 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 You can, but I cannot talk about the closed source software, uh, but uh, there is closed source software that interoperates with the server. Uh, but the uh, next slide is on Android. Okay. Is that software? Open to the client? Yes. Here. It's open source. 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 Some <laughs> So how much freedom can you do when configuring users? Let's say you want to have some users connecting only having access to parts of the network and other users getting access to different resources. So can you do something like, I mean, the product I'm thinking is uh, Pews, Pews Secure by Juniper. So you can have groups of people only having access to one network or other network. Yes, uh, you can customize uh, what kind of routes you send to each user. Uh, in, in the new versions, we are also experimenting with sending firewalls. So uh, when a user connects with firewalls, he doesn't not only send him these routes that he can see this part of the network, but uh, it prevents him from using a firewall to connect <coughs> anywhere else. Uh, this is pretty much experimental now, but uh, this is the idea where we want to get. <coughs> Uh, so you, you can uh, you can customize per user or a group of users. But we get more questions. Okay, thank you, Nikos.